Hello and welcome to Imagine America Radio, a service of the Imagine America Foundation and Imagine America Publishing Company. My name is Bob Martin. I'm the president and CEO of Imagine America Foundation. In the last 20 years, Imagine America has provided scholarship support and tuition assistance to students attending career colleges all across this country. The purpose of this podcast is to promote technical and career education and to inform the public of career opportunities that are not just in high demand, but essential to the American workforce. We hope you will enjoy today's podcast. So let's get to our next guest. Welcome to this episode of Imagine America Radio. Joining us today is Mike Ambrose, Director of Enrollment Management and Campus Director at Ohio Technical College, or OTC, located in Cleveland, Ohio. OTC has been educating tomorrow's workforce since 1969. Ohio Technical Colleges is accredited by the Association of Career Schools and Colleges. Ohio Technical College trains students to enter the workforce in automotive, diesel, heavy equipment, automotive body, power sports, generator power systems, welding, and many, many more. Mike, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you uh, giving me an opportunity to speak about uh, the skilled trades and the demand that, that the country's facing and um, the, the passage of the infrastructure bill by Congress that's just increased opportunities for young people. Hey, I, I know I speak for Leo when I say we're just happy to have you back back on board. You've been a long time uh, supporter of the of uh, the Imagine America programs and through different through different schools, and now you're back at Ohio Technical College. We couldn't be more excited for you. <clears throat> Today's Thank topic you, today, Mike, is going to be uh, diesel technique technician careers. As a leading leading provider of technician training, couldn't think of anybody else better to talk to than you and showcase Ohio Technical College. Hey, Mike, could we start out very quickly by giving our listeners a little bit of idea of what a diesel technician is and what they may do on a daily basis? Sure. Uh, Actually, you know, diesel technicians, they do a variety of work. Obviously, they work on diesel engines. (laughs) Without saying, however, they work on hydraulics, transport, refrigeration, um, electronic components that are found in today's complex vehicles, uh, mobile equipment, construction equipment, agricultural equipment, trucks, buses, ships, trains. And as I have said in the past and continue to say, I think the world's best kept secret is power generators. And we're one of very few schools uh, throughout this nation that has a power generator system program. (laughs) Believe me, there's never been a better time for uh, these technicians because these generators, they're either natural gas or diesel, but they still run the same way. Hmm. Just need these all over the entire world. You know, we've talked to you about that before. I know Lee wants to jump in here. Uh, we'll come back to that in a little bit later because you've got some uh, thoughts about the opportunities there that we really haven't really talked about with any other of our guests in the past. Lee? Yeah. Um, so, Mike, this is Lee. I'm talking to Mike Ambrose with Ohio Technical College. What does the career outlook look like for diesel technicians? And what is the national average uh, that a diesel technician can expect to make in a year? Great to talk to you again, Lee. Uh, I know it's been a little while since we spoke, so thank you for having me. And uh, the growth outlook is very good. I mean, the Bureau of Labor Statistics shows that diesel technicians uh Growth is projected over a 10-year span of 2018 to 2028, 20, 20, sorry about that, at a 5% growth, and the estimated jobs are near 300000 median salary of $47,350. So, um, Bureau of Labor Statistics says that this job is pretty good, and, and I think that as we continue to... Uh, into the spending of, again, the infrastructure bill, you might see increases in, in all these areas. Yeah, and I'm sure it's, it's kind of difficult to get a national average on salary, especially with a program like diesel, because you could be doing so many different things with a diesel program, right? And we kind of talked about power, 
power generator or uh, generator power systems. Can you talk a, a little bit about that program and sort of what what that is? What is a power generator, and you know why should we care about uh, the technicians that, that need to work on those? Sure. Yeah, that's a great question. So, all of our students that uh, go through the diesel program have an opportunity to earn getting into this pro uh, standby generator systems, and these are the the large commercial units. Uh, you know, a lot of people today they have the small units at their homes, so that if there's a storm, the refrigerator on, the heater, or the air conditioner. Well. There's places that just cannot be without power in this country. Um, and it seems like there's more and more storms, whether it's a hurricane or a tornado, uh, ice storm, whatever that may be. In places like hospitals and nursing homes and yeah. police stations, fire departments, they can't be without power. Because if the power goes out, unfortunately, uh, we know what can happen to people. And, you know, it's not just those areas, but any time a building's built over a certain size or height today, it needs a generator. You see uh, hotels now that have generator systems, banks that need to have generators because of don't, the currency today is, is people, don't, they don't use paper any longer, right? Yeah, <laughs> so it's all true. Right. So, you know, if the, if the power goes out of the bank, they can't lose this information. Um, and demand is so great that last year uh, for 2021, we had 100% placement out of our program. Of wow. The, out of that program. Yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. Wow. Yeah, I never even thought about banks, but you're right. I mean, of course, hospitals, that makes sense. But banks, yeah, I mean, you're right. I don't, I don't carry cash at all. I mean, <laughs> I'm probably just of that generation that doesn't carry cash, but there's a lot of people like me that don't, and they use credit cards. And yeah, you're right. The banks would have to have to keep their systems up so that they know what's going on. I, just, just out of curiosity, uh, uh, we've seen an awful lot of these huge data centers. Is is that also do they do they do just yeah. do they keep backup generator systems for theirs those two? I don't know 100%, I would assume, but you know, there, there's um, probably, probably, yeah. I, I mean, I, I absolutely would assume that. Uh, you know, one thing we don't think about is, is airports. Yeah. Uh, it's funny, but a couple of years ago, um, it was in Atlanta. I remember this story when the power went out and they couldn't, they were stuck in the airport. And that's really unacceptable in the United States. <laughs> that uh, you're going to be stuck because power is out at an airport. So they require it too. Got to keep everything going. Yeah, I got a, I got a question for you too. So speaking about uh, the technician and their job and going to work on these generators, how does someone <clears throat> go to work on a generator? I'm guessing they have to have a backup generator to the, to the generator because let's just say hypothetically the airport goes down and the power's out, but the generator doesn't work and the power is still out. So then the technician is then called to come in or is it something that uh, the airport has two generators and if one doesn't work, then the other one works and we have to fix the one that didn't work. <laughs> How does that work? 90% of, I mean, obviously in those, in, in those situations of like first responders, hospitals, they generally have more than one. Right. It just can't be power. Yeah. And, and when it comes to anything emergency medical, uh, you know, these technicians go out every 30 days because that's government okay. regulated. Yeah, to test. So service truck and they make sure they're running properly. Makes sense. So when, and now I'm going back again, it just makes me think of, it was when and the San Francisco 49ers and the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah. And, the Super and it brings back bad memories for me, but... <laughs> But uh, the power went out at the Super Bowl, at the Superdome. Yeah, I remember. For a couple minutes. But then the, the generators kicked on. Everybody, you know, this is the biggest sporting event that we have in the United States, and it happened there. Yeah. And if it wasn't for those generators, you know, how many millions of people, hundreds of millions of people are watching? And yeah. they wouldn't have been able to finish the game. So 
you know, you just don't think about these things. Again, that's why I say it's the world's best kept secret. And, you know, you're talking about uh, a clean professional job. You're mm-hmm. driving the site. You don't bring these generators into the <laughs> into a shop, work on them, and send them back. So that's why this is the type of student that we're looking for at Ohio Technical College that wants to be at the peak of the pyramid when it comes to the industry. The one that, that has the hand on the hands-on skills, however, really has that tech savvy that uh, is needed today. Well, let's talk about the tech savvy needed today, because it seems like, you know, this is definitely worth getting an education in, in in the diesel diesel technology field. But what would you say to somebody that would say, oh, I can just learn how to be a diesel technician from my old man because he worked on trucks. And does someone need to go to school to be a diesel technician in today's environment? Uh, Yes, yes. I mean, can they still do it without... Yes, you can, but it's extremely difficult. I can tell you that if you go to, around to any any over-the-road trucking place today, uh, we have it with our meetings, our advisory meetings. They tell us what we should be teaching. The one thing is, is they need a younger staff that has the tech savvy that can work with the computers because that's what they are. They're rolling computers today. Mm-hmm. Um, and the older generation that's getting ready to retire, that's creating this big skills gap, they they don't want to learn that technology. Um, so we're trying to find the young generation that <clears throat> grown up with it that is used to learning this way. So again, you do need the technical skills more than just having a wrench. So, so, um, this is Bob again, Mike. That, uh, I got a, another question. So he got me interested in diesel careers, and uh, I'm either a pair, I'm either a student or the adult, and I got, I got other people that that I, I that need to have information about your about a school or the school. Are there three or four things that we should be that I should be looking at as a consumer or a potential student when I'm looking at a school because there are other schools there are schools there probably are some that aren't accredited uh but but having said that are there three or four things that you would recommend our audience look at or 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 with regard to schools training education that sort of thing absolutely and you brought one of them up as uh are they accredited Uh, i would uh steer clear of anyone that's not accredited at the accreditation is worth so much it means that you've got the Department of Education that says that what they're teaching um, is valuable. That uh, you, you're you can go to a college that's accredited and it's a worthwhile investment. Something that's not it may not be. Uh, something else that you want to look at is what industry relations do they have? They offer ASE certification. And will they pay for it? Also, will they do they with the industry relations? Do they have credentials that you can earn through manufacturer training? Um, you know, manufacturer training because of these uh, and computerized systems. <coughs> they want to make sure that the technician that's coming out can go that they can handle that. Uh, that's why we were part of the Get Ahead program, which is uh, Freightliner, Western Star, and Detroit Diesel. And every one of our students, will, when they go through the diesel program, can earn certifications with those manufacturers at, at no cost. And whether they're hired by Freightliner or Kenworth, at least Kenworth knows, hey, they can handle the manufacturer training. So they know they're getting a good student in the end. We want to make sure that there's a good diverse equipment to use or to learn on. I want to find out what uh, industry experience the instructors have. You know, uh, what, what, What's their background? How many years did they have? Are they only able to do one thing really well or is it a multitude of things? And, and the last thing that I would say that's crucially important when you're looking at a school like this is how available are the instructors to you? 
it's great that you've got if you've got uh, instructors that are knowledgeable, but if they're not there to assist you uh, with some one-on-one -on -one time, you, know, you better learn it all in class because you, you're some people learn at different ways and different levels. Sometimes it takes people a little bit of one-on-one -on -one attention, and that's something I think that really stands out with Ohio Technical College is the fact that we offer free tutoring by instructors. Um, afternoon or on Fridays because students only go to school Monday through Thursday here and it's free. So there's never a reason for students not to reach their full potential. Getting back to the, the generators, I think that's the reason why we have such a great success of having the cream rise to the top of that program, give them all the help that they need. You know, we, uh, you know, it's like we've, we've been in this, um, in the scholarship business uh, for a long time and been working with schools like been with you for, for a lot, long time. And I can't underscore or, or support strongly enough um, the, the industry, the uh, instructor side of it, meaning that um, to, have, to have qualified instructors that have been in the field, that, that, that have actually done what they're trying to teach these young people to do, is absolutely critical. And then how that gets to, to people in high school that we find, and I know Lee will, Lee, Lee will, will back this up, is that when you go out to the high school instructors that are in automotive and diesel, what they think about the school tells you everything because yeah. that, those, are the guys, those are the people that are influencing their students to go wherever they're going, okay? And they say, look at, you should look at Ohio Technical because they've worked with Ohio Technical. They know Ohio Technical. They've placed kids with Ohio. So, so that's critically important. Absolutely. You hit on a great, so I just want to reinforce to the audience, this whole is the quality of the instruction, the background of the instructors and their ability to work with young people that may need some extra help to understand certain things. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I simplify it as, you know, every school is going to have books, tools, uniforms. They're all going to have training aids. Some might have newer training aids. Some might have more than others. That's, that's okay. But the best part of an education comes from the instructor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why you've got to know. You know, Mike, uh, Mike uh, Lee and I have both been to your, to, to your campus and, uh, very cool. I think you just got to go there and walk it and you, you leave there with a pretty cool impression about Ohio Technical College. Yeah. You we've, know, we've been to a lot of schools and it's probably one of my favorite schools. Yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, what you guys do with, with the, what you, 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 I'm an old guy. Okay. And what you guys do, have done to, to kind of keep the, the old stuff alive, meaning the, the old technology, the, the cars, all that sort of is, is really, yeah, the restoration stuff is really quite, yeah. really quite unique. My, I, I applaud you guys for doing that. Thank you. I mean, we, it's, uh, it is a unique place. It's, it's like nothing else. I know that that used to be one of our sayings and, and it's so true. Uh, we're very, very big, the size of this place. Uh, yeah. Yet we still a small student population because everything that we do is about the success of the student. But uh, we want to make it's an experience when you come here. Yeah, we've been here for a long time. Uh, you know, we've got one location and started out as the Diesel College in 1969. So it was Ohio Diesel, and yes, the names changed to Ohio Technical College because we added automotive and restoration and welding and those other programs. However, Del, uh, Diesel really is uh, where this began and continued to to want to be the leader in that industry. Yep. That's why we wanted to have you on today. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hey, why don't you, before we close here, why don't you, why don't we give you a chance to give us your, your www dot or and your any contact information? If we got people that want to know more about Ohio Technical, just yeah. in general, they want to look at the admissions process. Maybe they want to contact you. Um, if uh, I'm assuming that you're available through email, etc. Why don't you give us that information? So you can see us at www.ohiotech.edu, um, or you can call the school. It's 800-322-7000. My direct extension is 141. You're welcome to contact me anytime, and I 
make this promise to everyone. If you leave me a message, if I'm not in my office, I will call you back within 24 hours. Um, you're also welcome to email me. It's M Ambrose, so M A M B R O S E at ohiotech.edu. Um, please just give me a call, drop me a line. We are going to have our, we're going to get back to doing an instructor seminar in 2023 now that COVID looks like we're, we're keeping our fingers crossed that we're past this. We know since 1969, you produ you've been producing a quality product. We know that we've had hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of our students that have gone through uh, your program and are out there out in the field now um, in very meaningful careers. And we just appreciate what Ohio Technical College has done. And we want to thank you for coming on today's episode of Imagine America Radio. And I'm certain we're going to have you on a lot, a lot more. So thanks, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, thank John, you Mike. I Thank you. All right. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of Imagine America Radio. We hope you found it informative. For more information about future episodes and the Imagine America Foundation, you can go to our website, imagine-america.org forward slash podcast to subscribe to future podcasts and to get information on the many programs offered by the Imagine America Foundation and Imagine America Publishing. Please subscribe today so you won't miss any of our upcoming episodes. For now, thank you very much for joining us and best wishes.